Uh, presentation is uh, uh, Bernard Bodman, Applied Math, a digital contrast agent for computed tomography scans of coronary arteries. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and I would like to thank the organizer for putting everything together so neatly and making all of these talks work seamlessly. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is um, not so much an overview of my research, but just one topic. Uh, we're going to be concerned with analyzing images, or rather volume data, that comes out of X-ray uh, CT. Um, and so uh, Ed mentioned that I'm also doing some work with students in digital pathology uh, project, which is somewhat similar in the spirit of the techniques, the mathematical machinery that's used. Uh, but here I will only be talking about X-ray images. Uh, so as you can see, there's actually quite a number of people involved there, and I think the major challenge for us was to just talk to each other efficiently, to find out what is the problem that, that, is, that, that people are really interested in on the, the medical side. And so I started this maybe about three and a half years ago and imported some of this problem to Waterloo when I came here last year with my collaborators. So let me just... Um, <clears throat> Um, let me just mention what, what, what the problem is. So we all have uh, coronaries that as we age, uh, well, mm, there's stuff that goes into the artery wall. You can see it right here. And, um, and, and in particular, when, when that is lipid and it's fast growing inside the artery wall, then that can burst, go into, enter the bloodstream, lead to a coagulation that shuts down your coronary within two seconds. And that is what's called an in, in, in uh, you know the word. In any case, it's, it's really bad news. Um, and so the problem is that this here is really hard to see on the current screening machinery. So you have a CT scanner. It picks up calcium very well, but it can't really see those lipid deposits. And so what we would like to, to be able to is, is pick up these changes in tissue. So changes in your coronary arteries right on the onset. Um, and so here's my simplified view of a radiologist. So uh, a radiologist, this is how a mathematician would see it. He identifies tissue types. So, oh, here's this, here's this. Uh, then he extracts morphological features, meaning, oh, this is away from the lumen, away from where the blood flows. This is, you know, that's not critical, but here's something very, very close, very, say, big, ready to rupture. Uh, and, and, and then uh, provide a risk assessment, meaning, you know, this patient should really go very uh, severe measures of, well, risk factor modification or, or, or even invasive uh, stent uh, um, surgery or so. Okay. And so, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, David Koff's, uh, 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 well, um, comments about the, the huge amount of data that's being generated, well, Radiologists may not like it. We're, we're sort of excited about this uh, because we, we, can, we can try and help here. Uh, so our, our task, I see, is take all of this huge amount of data and help the radiologists identify those different tissue types that they're interested in. Now, here, here's some standard uh, off-the-cuff technique that you could use, uh, which is called thresholding. I didn't didn't really do anything here. I, I sort of just try to give you an impression of what this technique amounts to, and that is just try to increase the contrast. Everyone can do this on your computer. Suppose here's an artery, so the black uh, uh, stream here, that, that, that's where the blood would flow, then surrounding it is the artery wall. So this is like a tube going diagonally across the image. And then you would like to try and isolate places or, or features in the artery wall where the tissue doesn't behave the way it should. And so as you can easily see, there's some speckled calcific deposits right through the artery, but it's really kind of hard to distinguish with this uh, simple increase the contrast method. Uh, it, it, it's difficult to say, is it noise or is there really something consistent happening? Um, and so the idea that we had quite a while ago was, well, what about looking at textural consistencies in those images? Can you help someone identify changes in tissue reliably when you look at textures? 
Um, and so what's nice about the, the threshold idea, 130 Hounsfield units, everyone agreed on some standard at some point. So there's a statistical aspect behind it, which is like quality control for our image assessment. So we know that this works in clinical trials with this and this confidence level, and then we, we can be confident on using it in a practical setting. Um, and this, this allows us now to introduce mathematical, more elaborate tools if we have the same type of quality control that, that we're used to. And so now we're doing the same thing for, for textures. So let's try to determine whether there's a significant change in the texture of the fibromuscular tissue. The challenge is because there's such a lot of data, we really need fast algorithms that process all of this data. So Fourier transforms was, was mentioned, that's one example. But the problem with that, related to that, is for example, if you use wavelets, then there's an inherent structure in the design of those wavelets uh, which processes images in a row, column, and maybe slice fashion if you're in 3D, which is what we do. Um, and so you, you introduce an artificial directional bias in the processing. And if you're looking at a video stream, maybe that's not so, such a big deal if you have, have HDTV and you see staircases appearing on people's faces. But if your, your patient's life depends on it, then maybe you do not want to introduce anything such any such artificial structure. And so let me just show you a comparison of uh, uh, the methods um, that, that, we've, that we've seen so far. So this is the, the natural volume data, the, the data that comes out of the machine of this artery, and you see there's this blob of calcium. Here's something where we've tried to increase the contrast and set a threshold that isolates regions where uh, the intensity of the X-ray absorption goes above a certain level. And so here you see a, a calcific deposit sitting inside the artery wall. Now let's compare that to uh, the texture analysis that I was talking, to, uh, talking about based on a construction of wavelets which does not have any directional preference. And here it is. So as you can see, there's a huge change in contrast. You isolate the features that stick out that don't have the right behavior, as you can see over here. And actually, this yellow here has been classified as lipid. And there is that little bit of blue that's still peeking through the lipid over there. So really, what we're looking at is a calcific core to this deposit. And so, but again, um, let me conclude by saying, all of these elaborate uh, mathematical techniques, even if we don't know exactly how they work, what we have is the statistical methods, the statistical quality assurance of confidence level levels that allow the users, the radiologists, to operate those, uh, those algorithms without going into the nitty-gritty details. And I think that's a, a, a worthwhile project for a lot of the applications that we're looking at today. Thank you. One quick question. Do you have pathology to document the yeah, Yes, so this, this has been correlated with histopathological sections. Questions, tests. comments here? Yeah, the, it, that's exactly the point. So uh, this here is actually uh, an excised uh, human coronary specimen that's been imaged. And what we do after we, we image it and we analyze it is we cut it into slices. And then we have someone stain uh, those slices and look at it. And so our pathologist in this team that you've seen uh, compares what our algorithm says and what uh, the, the stained slice says. And we, we in a forthcoming uh, publication, we have very good agreement be between what we say and what, uh, what, what's actually there. David? Thank you. I'd like to make a few comments and maybe ask you a few questions. The first question is, did you use iodinated contrast when you did those studies for on CT, or do you take just the uh, basic imaging without injecting any uh, additional contrast? So that's yes, there's no contrast agent used in here. So that, the second comment I would like to do here is that uh, the plaque in the coronary artery uh, is a big problem that, that's here when it's classified pretty easy to see. We see it very, very easily on a, on a non-prep CT scan. 
But the, the question is, if the plaque is growing, this will lead to stenosis and it creates some angina. So that's not an acute problem. The acute problem is when your plaque ruptures and when it migrates, which may be worse when there's calcium, and, and then of course it's the vessel. And uh, is there any way to have some predictive values here if you, you want to know if, if the plaque has, is at risk to migrate or not? So that, that's the question. If the, in our institution, we're now doing some research on MR to, to detect the uh, uh, bleeding within the plaque, and if there is any hemorrhage within the plaque, that means that it may migrate and the crease is lost. So that's the second question. Yes. Um, so I only have a rudimentary understanding of the, the medical side. And we have to uh, isolate parameters that we believe are significant in terms of risk factors. And so one parameter that we can easily assess in images is if there is lipid plaque, which is in the beginning stages of calcification. So you see these speckled calcific deposits, then there's an indicate or a belief, I would say, that that co coincides with inflammation with these monocytes going in there and, and, and creating macrophages that, that lead to inflammation. Um, and so if there's heavily inflamed tissue, which is close to the lumen, close to where the blood flows, then my medical collaborators believe that that, that, will be, that, that is the vulnerable plaque. That is the high-risk plaque that we, we have to try and see. So, the first, so you're already one level further down the schematic diagram, right? Extract morphological features and, and then identify the risk associated with them. This here is the first stage. The first stage is identify tissue types reliably in, in as much resolution as we can from the data that we're given. Then someone can look at it and say, this is close to the lumen. This is exactly what I'm looking for. This is high risk. Something else is far away. I don't care about this. You know, this person can go home. This person should stay. I, I, so I think you know, we're, we're just working on one end of, of, uh, of the, the stream. But I believe, yes, of course, that there needs to be work on, on all uh, ingredients in this chain, yes. All right, thank you very much. Thanks.